Japan. It was probably my top two of the competitions. Oh, what, was the, what, what was the other one? I go, I've gone uh, back and forth. Uh, I think uh, Bellocchio. How long is this? Very yeah, well. It's uh, mm -hmm. it really exam time. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I read the script, it was one of the best scripts uh, I read last year. Oh, that's really, interesting. Yeah, it because, was really good, really good script. Because usually his, his thing is not in the script. I know. So, and this one is more, it's almost like a genre of film, yeah, yeah. which is you wouldn't expect it from, from him. Like yeah. That. So it's, it's incredible. But uh, let's, uh, I love this film so much that I, I saw it uh, last night again. Not all of it, but it's, it was incredible. Focus on the beginning last night. Because uh, the first time I was getting into it, and, but watching the beginning again, it's just this, this air of mystery, and it's almost like it's an investigation, and it's, it's a bit like Rebecca, but also there's a, there's a sense of menace almost, and there's an element of like this protagonist gets this challenge, and everybody's saying, are you, are you sure you can do it, or how you really do it? So tell me um, this, this entrance into the story, and this, this sense of, which is not what you, what you would expect, for the themes that develop later on, mm -hmm. but there's a very strong sense, I thought, of atmosphere, of almost something sinister, something profoundly challenging at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the beginning, I mean, the first half hour of the film is uh, playing also with the convention of the period piece. Not even the period piece, but it's kind of a dialogue with cinema, because it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, there's a Rebecca feeling to it, there's a, um, so, you know, which part is not. There's also, I was thinking, in the beginning, I was thinking about Jane Campion and the piano, and really wanted to yeah, hold the hand of this particular film. Just, yeah, that's the image, just really holding the hand. It's not about holding. I'm not a quarter at all. I, I, I don't have references when I think about films. My mm -hmm. films, and I always kind of, I'm always trying to be primitive and don't even watch films at all at that time. I'm really obsessed with finding the grammar and the language of the film and within its own bubbles. I mm -hmm. know. Um, but I'm so really obsessed with the fact that movies should be entertaining, should be catching you with a pitch, you know, and mm -hmm. really put you in an atmosphere where there's tension and, and that you can, and with a strong objective for the character. Mm -hmm. But this time, you know, the program is then changed. Uh, and, and that's also uh, a way it's surprising, you know, it's not a way to abort, <laughs> abort the mission, it's really a way to actually, yeah, keep surprising the viewer and, and, and offer a new light and, yeah. you know, giving him or her the comfort of something that seems, oh, is it a panic, or oh, is it, it's kind of a spy story, and then, Coming a whole other thing. Right. And, um, that was the most difficult thing to craft, I guess. I remember that on, on second watching, uh, second viewing of this film, uh, because my first reaction was this is not just about this love story, but it's also, and it didn't need to be probably. Mm -hmm. I love the emphasis on the professionalism the sense of professional struggle, which, because the, the idea of the painting serves as a support and as a metaphor for the love story, but it, it almost, you can go both ways. I and mean, in watching it again, I noticed that, yes, the, the painting and the, the, the actual craft is a metaphor for something else, but actually the love story could also be just a metaphor for professional artistic achievement. Yeah. And so, tell me if that was, uh, was conscious, and because there's a perfect balance there, mm -hmm. which I think is the real strength of the film, because it's not just about a pretext mm -hmm. to make it about the two characters. Yeah, yeah. 
the movie's being really, really playful with its metaphors or with its dispositive, uh, trying to harvest the whole potential of the movie and the whole, also the whole fun of this situation. Like, for instance, and so it's love, it's a movie about love and creation, but like really, like how intricate they are, like how, and, and I want people to kind of get lost. I was kind of lost. Um, like, the, there's a pilot you see in the film where I'm just saying, I know everything about you because I keep looking at you, and I know what it says, well, you should be looking at me, who am I looking at? And this is like the moment that kind of synthesizes the fact that it's a circle, that everything is linked. Their love dialogue is a creation dialogue. Yeah. Their love, the film is, mise en scène, is building this love dialogue, but maybe it's this love dialogue that is actually yeah. building the mise en scène. And I had a lot of pleasure of getting lost, even in this. And even, you know, the, when we were shooting, I mean, I was looking at, my DP was looking at a woman looking at another woman, and I was looking at the woman looking at the other woman, and it was uh, this whole circle of looks that was, that of course was crafted very accurately, but that was even, it was richer than what I would have expected. I love this idea of, of the act of looking as um, it's almost like an act of conquest of, of defining oneself, that you have to escape. And uh, I love that Valeria Golino says that she enters the room, she's confronted with her own image, mm -hmm. and it's as if she was, she was waiting for me. Yeah. And I don't know if that to you, because the character really has an air of defeat to her, mm -hmm. like in a way she's been, she's been swallowed by the system. But that sense of like, you know, the, the painting of her nailed her, like that, that was the final blow. Uh, and, and, and the rest of the film, the two characters are basically trying to avoid this, this stare, this, this look. Um, how, how, how was it working with Valeria to cross this character that is, in a way, she's just losing, you know, this game of stairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, she, she, she talks about it better than I do, because she is radical. And uh, it was difficult, because she was there only three days, and it was the end of the show. Uh -huh. And she came up in a world that was already, already existed, you know. But it was, of course, uh, scheduled like that because mm -hmm. she said she was ter terrified. I think it's like terrorized her because we're friends and like we have a lot of fun. I picked her also because I didn't want this character to be this, you know, the grand old mm -hmm. woman, Victor, uh, very old. Uh, I wanted this woman to be 50, to be beautiful, to have her own desire. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. And she laughs because um, Mariana speaks in town and she just lights yeah, up. And she, alive and to be frank, honest, and that she, we would, there would be no, even though there's a hierarchy, because there's a hierarchy, still, we don't need that hierarchy much because she, she when we talk, it's really horizontal. Yeah. I was obsessed with the equality within yeah. the characters. Yeah. And um, now she entered that world being really because of what I want to be really constrained in making her like still stillness, working on the stillness, which I think is something she she she, she had not done. And, uh, <laughs> and and speaking of things that were not done, and uh, you said that uh, in working with Adele, you were with this film, you wanted to find a new side of her, something different with her compared to, I guess, when we worked together in the past, but also in general with her, with what she's doing as an actress. Can you tell me specifically, what did you see in her that could be brought out? Well, it was, 
it wasn't something, it wasn't a secret that I shared with her. I think it's, it's a trust, it's the fact that I trust her to be inventive and to, she's a searcher, she, she's always experimenting. And um, I trust her to surprise us all because she's an author, she's uh, a brilliant actress. And I was, uh, was the opportunity to actually, uh, yeah, trust her with this. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that we know each other so well was, uh, uh, was was actually the, the starting point of to think, uh, of trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was a lot of, oh, I know she, she can do like this or like that. It's, it's, I know the potential or potential and how, how she's a searcher. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the funny thing is that in Waterloo, she, she was we built the character as a femme fatale, which she has not done then. Mm. You know, so it wasn't about, I think we both, we always have been working on building the characters together and freeing her of this strong position that she is. Mm -hmm. And then and that was totally welcome, really welcome in French cinema as a new burst and as a new femininity that is. Contemporary, modern, um, and I, I, I love that about uh, a journey that we go. So, you know, we, we, I saw that blooming mm. and was amazed and happy as everyone <laughs> that it happened. But she, she can be anything, and we should trust her with this. And I really, I mean, we meet at the point where we renew ourselves. Okay. Yeah. You know, it was, it was uh, that's that scene. Uh, another thing that for me is, is for me to this film is how, because there are the sparks of passion or, or energy, but you can, you can you can do passion, you can make the passion explode, but there's a way of killing it immediately afterwards. And there's the scene where the first time that they try to develop the, uh, the piano. And it's just like maybe it's because I was rewatching it, so I know the what that brings at the end, mm -hmm. like the the, the the energy of the climax. But like you get so anxious when they start playing, and you feel you feel it rising. But then it's brutal. It's like in, in two seconds the magic goes away. Like she she forget. Oh, I don't know. I forgot how to play. Mm -hmm. That scene. I don't know. It's, it's Five seconds from when the notes uh, start mm -hmm. and when it just dies, but it's. Tell me about that process of. Because it's so difficult to micromanage that level of dialing it up and then dialing it down. Yeah. Well, that was the whole. the whole process of writing and then finding the rhythm of that. You know, Snowbird is always a risk in the end of it. I think it's. It's kind of a genre, <laughs> and there were also there was, and it's about being really accurate and about how a scene becomes always something else. Mm -hmm. It's not like the scene where they share a lot, the scene where uh, they see another side. You know, it's 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 about being more fluid, mm -hmm. more weird, more surprising, and really. Thinking about the rate of the feelings right. and so the delay and the frustration, and I work a lot on the frustration and sure. the delay. But I was confident because, because it's about being confident. <laughs> it's all about yeah, trusting <laughs> yourself with an idea, pushing it. Because everybody's always kind of scared. You know, like for instance, everybody was telling me, maybe you should do it with a smile. And I was like, she's never gonna smile like an hour now. This might the first smile is a 60 minutes after the beginning of the film, smiling at each other for the first time. 
and everybody was thinking this should smile, and no one, no one just wanted to smile, I want the smile to be something that will strike us, and we keep seeing women smiling all the time. I never see women not smiling. I saw it during the uh, football World Cup, and I was like, finally, because we keep smiling. And when you're that smiler, you're very... You keep smiling, because unfortunately we keep telling you to smile. Yeah, <laughs> and, you're, and you're totally, otherwise you, you look suspicious, you know. And um, so you have to be very confident. <laughs> but I was also given that confidence by the other regime of the film, because it has these two legs, it's this very accurate chronicle, step by step of falling in love, working on the lay, frustration, this point. And there's also this other layer that is, it's the memory of the of a love story. Yeah. And uh, so that Vivaldi scene that is a turning point, but Kind of delayed, kind yeah. of just glimpse. Yeah. Yeah. You do it because you know sure. there's that final scene. You know that there's this other layer. There's this philosophy of love, of love that you can give. There's this verse. There's this. So you have to trust. I always think of it as a right. Like if I was given the, uh, the opportunity to design a ride in a Disney, I would, you know. Yeah. The climbing would be very, very, very long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would it be? Uh, and tell me about because there is a, there is a lot of painting in this film. As we said, there's an emphasis on the actual craft, yeah. which is very interesting in the way that you choose to show and to uh, frame the actual painting. So there's a lot of like nervous sketching, which a lot with just the pencil. Um, but tell me how you worked. Uh, with this painter, with this real life painter, to because obviously you have to be respectful of the historical context, yeah. but also you have to make it different enough that even in the there are a lot of close ups of the painting which you have to see, you have to notice that it's her, but it's not really her mm -hmm. because it's it's the rules and convention. So how did you make it again as a fine tuning in making it? suited to the story and, and the moment of the, of the character. That was super hard. That frankly that I was ignorant of how hard it would be. We were all. And, uh, it wasn't hard in the editing room. It, it was the process of taking all this. It was mm -hmm. really hard. The basic thing is yeah you have to take the, the real you have to stay to be true to the history, the real pigments, the real canvas, the real mm -hmm. So this is all accurate. Then I met this painter on Instagram because I didn't want to work with a copyist or a cinema painter or somebody from the loop who would know exactly mm -hmm. the store painting. I wanted it to be a young painter, a French mm -hmm. painter from today. And I met the body of work of Ellen de Mer, and she's, yeah, she's very, she's Painting oil, and she's much more in the tradition of the 19th century, and that's what she studied. So that's why it's kind of avant garde, yes. in a way. Um, but the thing is, I wasn't obsessed with the work, with the final work. We hardly get a glimpse of what it looks yeah. like. It's not about is it going to be good, is it masterpiece, or whatever, is it going to be true, blah, blah, blah. It's about the layers, the work. So we decided. We took shots of Adele and we decided which we could be but to paint in what was going to be the difference between them yeah. because I didn't want it to be lousy with the other one. Beautiful. Exactly, so, you can make, they still need to be competent, yeah. which is why if you're not in that moment, yeah. how do you do the... You, you think a lot. And mm -hmm. so then you go and I know, and I went, it was also a strong collaboration with the DP, who went to be thinking about this. So I went, we went and we we watched her paint, the whole painting, and we were like, okay, maybe we should look at this part, maybe this part, because I want to talk about the job, not about, yeah, yeah how beautiful is it going to be. And because also I wanted, to, we had to shoot the precise moment, and I didn't want it to be cut at the editing room. Mm -hmm. So we had to pick a moment that was interesting, <laughs> and not too long. 
anything so that it wouldn't get it. Okay. So that's how we... And that, but it's kind of a pity because when you see that the layers, what is fascinating is when you see the first layers, you see modernity. Yeah. You see that, that contemporary yeah. is about... It's always ideas. It's what... Where do you... How far do you go? How far exactly. do you go in the And the more you make it um, for the story, I guess the, the, the farther you go from possibility of the time, mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Well, thank you. That's nice. Thank you.